In this piano lesson, we'll take the world's greatest piano exercises, written by a man named Charles Hannon over 100 years ago. We'll transform them from this. into something that everyone can play and have a great time playing, like this. For every piano or keyboard player, one of the most important things is to have hands and fingers that work well able to play difficult passages accurately, powerfully, and at any speed. But how do you get superhero piano hands? The answer is you've got to train them like an athlete. That means you've got to practice daily. And just as importantly, you've got to practice the right exercises. Exercises that will give you the ability to play anything on the keyboard, no matter how fast or how difficult the song may be. So, what kind of exercises are the most effective? Amazingly, the absolute best, the gold standard of hand and finger piano exercises, is a book that was written over 100 years ago. Charles Hannon was a French piano composer who wrote a book titled The Virtuoso Pianist in 60 Exercises, and this has become the most widely used set of exercises in modern piano teaching. Here's the problem though. In order to take advantage of these incredible exercises, you've got to be able to read music. If you do, that's great, you're all set. But for the last 100 years, if you didn't read music, well, you were out of luck. Here's another problem. Even though these exercises will turn you into a piano powerhouse, they can be kind of dull, and you might die of boredom if you're playing through them every day. So, and of course you know I'm going to say this, I've got some great news for you today. In this lesson, we're going to solve both issues. We're going to make these exercises accessible to everyone, even if you can't read music. To do this, we've recorded these awesome exercises into video files that can be played by anyone. For instance, here's Hannon's exercise number six in video form. As you can see, that's a great solution to get these exercises into the hands of everyone. But there's still the second issue of these exercises being kind of dull. The good news is, I believe we've actually made them fun to play. Really fun to play. And here's how. We've recorded unique musical backing tracks for every single exercise. Here's an example of that same exercise played with backing tracks. Playing with backing tracks isn't just fun, it's actually helping to develop you as a musician. And in reality, nothing you do on the piano should be non-musical. Everything you play, including exercises, should stimulate your fingers, hands, ears, and sense of musicality. This is so important. When I was studying at the university as a piano major, I used to come into the practice rooms every morning and I'd spread out a newspaper on the piano and as I played through the Hannon exercises, I'd read the news for an hour. It's kind of funny, but even though my hands gain lots of power and speed, I wish I would have spent that time not just playing through those exercises in a purely athletic way, but I wish I would have spent all that time learning to play these exercises in a musical way. So in this lesson, I'm handing something I think is very valuable to you. Every single one of the exercises has a different backing track in a unique style. From soul music to rock and roll, each exercise will engage your mind in a unique musical way. And as you're listening and interacting, you will become a better musician. Let me play some samples now of some of the different exercises that have backing tracks in different musical styles. To kick things off, here's exercise number one in kind of a groovy, soulful style. The 
the backing track for exercise number two is much more acoustic. I call it the California Wedding. Check it out. Let's jump into the middle of the backing track for exercise number three. This one's a little more funky, which always makes me happy. Exercise number four, it's kind of a weird one. I call it funeral for a king. You'll see what I mean. Yep, that's weird, but it's cool. The next one, exercise number five, I call it the clock shop. Here it is. And to round it out, some swing and jazz guitar for exercise number six. Here's another great feature of this lesson. We've recorded each of these exercises at six different speeds, from very slow to moderately fast. Here's an example of an exercise at the slowest tempo. And to really help you get the correct fingering for both hands, this complete lesson comes with an ebook that's printable, and each one of the pages shows the exact fingering for each exercise, and you can use it as a reference. They look like this. You might have noticed many of the Hannon exercises are similar, but each one of them is slightly different, and each exercise focuses in on a different muscle group. Because of this, and if you go through all of the exercises, you will develop all of the muscle groups in your hands and your fingers evenly. This will really bring your playing up to the next level. Let me take a minute and talk about the best way to make these exercises a part of your daily practice routine. Number one, first print out the ebook that comes with this lesson. It will show you the exact fingering for every single exercise. Print out the pages from this ebook and set them right on your keyboard and then fire up the video for exercise number one. Remember, each exercise is recorded at six different speeds. So choose a speed that you can play comfortably and accurately. Don't be afraid to start slow. Number two, you may need to start by playing hands separately at first. By using just your right hand, you can really concentrate on getting your fingering accurate. Then play through the exercise using just your left hand. Eventually, you'll be able to play them together. It just takes practice. Number three, this lesson covers the first six Hannon exercises. Make it your goal to play through all six every day, and you'll have mastered another component of becoming a great keyboard player. By the way, we're going to continue this series and continue recording all of the hand and exercises. So make sure you nail these first six and then you can continue on. Let me give you a fair warning though. Don't play through each different speed in every exercise every day. This would probably drive you nuts. Start with the slowest speed, hands separate, 
and then play through all of the exercises at that same slow speed. Once you've gotten comfortable with the slowest speed, go to the next speed and play through all six different exercises at that speed every day. Eventually, you'll be able to play hands together at the highest speed and you'll be amazed how much speed, power, and dexterity that you'll gain. One final suggestion, and you know what, this is super important. Don't let your fingers or your hands tense up. Keep your hands loose and play lightly on the keys. These exercises are designed to develop the fine motor skills in your hands, and you absolutely don't want them to become like muscle-bound lumberjacks on the keys. So just play lightly. If you play heavy, another danger is developing tendonitis. You know what? I did that. That was so painful. So again, just keep it light and let the exercises do their work and you'll love going through this series. Well, there it is. I hope you're excited to dig in. To access all of the complete full-length videos, fingering charts, and audio files for this lesson, go to playpianotoday.com forward slash PF4, like power fingers in the number four. My name is David Sprunger. Thanks for listening. Now you know what to do. Go practice. Go practice.